It's like a bloody minefield. Oh, this is scary. This is very scary. Not gonna lie, I don't feel safe. What's up guys, welcome back to another episode and welcome to Arizona. We are on the banks of the Colorado River. As you can see, I have the Sea-Doo right behind me and I have a bunch of gear on this table, which can only mean one thing. Yes, we are going for an off-grid Sea-Doo send. We're gonna go camping one, maybe two nights, who knows? It's already two o'clock though. I've had a very eventful morning to get myself to this point, which is about four and a half, five hours from where I live. So let me get everything packed up onto the ski and I will tell you more about the adventures of this morning once we're on the water. Ooh, okay, we're almost ready to go. I've got my Power Ranger outfit on, but I didn't bring enough cash with me. Well, I did bring enough cash, but I didn't bring small enough denominations to pay for the camping here. And I don't really want to risk leaving the truck overnight. So apparently I can go up to the top and there is someone up there that I can pay. So as if we're not already late enough, <laughs> we're getting there. Whoa, donkeys and a coyote. Oh my goodness, it's like a nature show. You see the coyote up there on the hill? Crazy, crazy, crazy. Alrighty, goodbye truck. See you in a couple of days. Uh, I just got to drop this off in the self pay box. And then we're finally ready to get on the water. And like a herd of turtles, we're off. It is 3.28 p.m. I anticipate being on the water by 12. <laughs> So we're definitely not gonna get as much done today as I thought we would, but that's fine because I have all my camping gear so we can go as fast or as slow as we want. The idea is just to enjoy this beautiful scenery that we find ourselves in and go and explore more of the Colorado River. So that behind me is the Imperial Dam and that marks the very most southerly point that I can ride the Colorado River on a PWC. I'm pretty sure once you get past there, there's nowhere else you can ride and then you hit Mexico. So I'm gonna make my way north and from here, we are gonna head towards the Palo Verde Dam, which is as far north as I can get on this stretch of river. My goal is to ride as much of the Colorado as I can. I've already explored a pretty good amount of it. And so today, tomorrow, maybe the next day, that's what we're gonna be doing. Camping, finding anywhere we can on the side of the river to sleep make some food and just enjoy the freedom and the scenery that we have around us. My goal was to get all the way to the very top today and then slowly make our way down. But instead we're gonna have to switch things up, which I'm not worried about. So we're just gonna cruise up nice and gentle, see what we can find, see what trouble we get into along the way. Hopefully not trouble, but you know what I mean. So join me on this adventure. I hope you guys have enjoyed the last few that I've done. Without further ado, let's go that way. I'm not gonna lie, this is definitely some tense riding. Just come across these two buoys or buoys in the water, which I imagine say shallow water. So I assume this is the way to go, but visibility isn't great, so I can't tell. And uh, my depth gauge is playing up a little bit. So it's kind of giving me a reading, but also kind of not. It doesn't fill me with as much confidence as usual where it gives you like a pinpoint reading. Right now I can't see anything other than it says roughly four and a half feet, which 
not sure if I believe at the moment. So we're just going to take it nice and easy. But yeah, adventure is what I was looking for and adventure is what I've found because we've got quite a way to go before the first potential campsite and the sun is already going down. It's getting really shallow here. So there's a few sandbanks over there and there's one right in front of me, I think. So I gotta be very careful. And here you go. This is a prime example of why when you're riding new rivers and stuff, you have to be super careful. So you can see there really isn't much of a telltale that it gets super shallow here. But I cruised in, and as I cruised in, I saw it starting to get shallow. Immediately killed the engine. My thumb just feathers over the engine kill switch every time I do stuff like this, because as you can see, we are high and dry. Luckily, I glid, uh, glid, glowed, Gl glided, glided, there you go. I glided up to it as I saw it was getting shallow, so the ski's all fine, but prime, prime example. Now, we've only done about two, three miles of the river and already I'm facing this. So this is gonna be a lot more technical than I thought. But as you can see here, it's very, very shallow. So we are gonna have to be super careful. Um, and I'm just trying to see kind of which way, and it looks like hugging the riverbank is gonna be the way to get through here because I can actually see this ripple coming around. Good thing is the water's lovely and warm, so it's not a problem to be in here. I'm gonna have to turn this around and drag it back out, but that's the beauty of having these grab rails. There is the drop off right there. So this section's a bit deeper. I'm really not sure. I think I am still gonna go and check out that side just to make sure. All right then buddy, let's go. It's extra fun doing this when it weighs ugh, a thousand kilos. So yeah, the back is super heavy at the moment. Yes, you can see the shallow bit right there. Oh, I'm knackered already. Jesus Christ. Now I just gotta get all the sand out of the intake grate. There we go. And she's floating. Right now, don't float away. Yeah, and if you've ever wondered, can you fill up the gunnels? Yes. Perfectly stable. Beautiful. All right, so. Where is the shallow bit? No one. I've just found this, which is Pikachu. Pikachu? Pikachu. Pikachu. This is definitely some, uh, some very tense riding, I'm not gonna lie. Usually I'm on the river and I'm just cruising, enjoying myself this I'm looking 20 feet in front of the ski the whole time with my thumb on the kill switch just in case because worst case scenario you see you coming up on some shallow ground hit that kill switch and 99% chance you'll be fine you may run aground but at least you won't pull stuff through the, uh, the jet pump so yeah we'll keep punching up and uh, hopefully we will not run into any more shallow water it'd be nice if it was just this section of the river fingers crossed but who knows we've got another about 70 miles of this so hopefully I won't have to be looking right off the nose the whole time how's it going good do you know how shallow it gets up here yeah I hit one yeah. <laughs> yeah, all right cool thank cool. you have a good one. enjoy yourselves guys Thanks.
Dan, how squelchy do you think that's going to be? I think it's going to be an eight. Oh, two. Whew. So we've been riding now for about uh, two and a half hours. I'm not going to lie, it's been quite boring. There's these high banks, so you're sort of riding below the horizon level the whole time. So I can't really see what's around. So I'm going to look at my phone and see exactly where I am on the river and then see how much further up I want to go. Last night I actually mapped a bunch of different potential camping spots because I didn't know how far up or down I would be. So I just dropped pins and then saved an offline map. And that means I've got a good chance of being able to find somewhere to sleep tonight. I think this was one of them, but this is quite wet. And when I spoke to the, uh, the lady uh, that is in charge of the dam at the top to ask how much water they were going to be letting through, she said that there shouldn't be any major rise or fall in water levels for the next week. Oh, that mosquito just got me, didn't he? Through my bleeding thing. Ow. Okay, yeah, I'm not staying here. Absolutely not. Okay, we're going. I don't like mosquitoes. Go through my... Um, Whatever this is called, rash guard, UV shirt, whatever. Oh, by the way, should I do custom UV shirts? I have a cool idea designed for one with my swords logo on and then with, ah, they're in my ears now. And then um, everyday adventure on the sleeves. I think that'd look really cool. Uh, so if you'd be interested in one of those, let me know in the comments. I do want to start doing merch again. It's been a while since I've done a merch drop and I feel like we need some merch in our lives. So let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in that. Uh, okay, let's have a quick look before... <laughs> okay, no, no, we can look on the water. Yep, no, I'm not doing any of this. Okay, bye guys. I do have a thermocell with me as well, so I will be using that once we do camp up, and that should keep them at bay, but I was just not expecting that many. God, one got in my, my, uh, my Clooney. I don't know if you knew, but that bit in between your fingers there, that bit between your thumb and your index finger is called your Clooney. And one just bit the shit out of my Clooney. All right, so we are actually making pretty good progress. I would say we are about halfway probably more, honestly. So I think we just keep on pushing, honestly. And then I have quite a few spots marked up that way. There's one not far up here, but we've still got a little bit more light, although I don't want it to be dark when I'm putting up camp. But yeah, I think that's what we do is keep on trucking and hope that the river gets a little bit prettier. Because if it stays like this. So when I was looking on Google Maps, it was things like this that I marked, which actually of all the ones that I've seen so far, I think that would be the most viable. Pretty sure this one's quite remote. I think you would need a four x four to get in. So chances are, if nobody's here now, they're probably not gonna come. Man, this is getting kind of sketchy now. So I've still got to go a little bit further north before I get to what I've marked as a couple of campsites. Potentially, I've not seen them. The sun has gone down behind the horizon now, which means technically I need to be getting off the water relatively quick. And all along the banks here, there are homeless encampments. That's not exactly where I want to be camping over there. Oh, it's also incredibly shallow too. Oh, I will never ride this stretch of river again. This is shocking. So we just got a low fuel warning. So we're gonna have to pull over soon and add some fuel. This is getting really, really uncomfortably sketchy now. So this is basically just the outskirts of a city. I have so many dead flies smushed on my face. Oh, what do I do? What do I do? I mean, there's like pretty gnarly looking people just on the banks over there. Um, I'm not far from the dam. It's like, I want to do it for completion, but I also don't want to get my ski stolen overnight or get robbed. I did not anticipate this whatsoever. Looking on Google Maps, it looked like it was a couple of towns, but then mostly just middle of nowhere. And this is far from it. There's this side. I genuinely don't know what I should do in this situation. Because if I keep riding down, I will definitely be riding into dark, which I'm not that worried about. Obviously, not exactly the right thing to do, but given the situation, 
might be the safest thing to do. Pushing on further north is risky because I may get up there and then there's definitely nowhere to stay and then I have to come back down again and so it's even further to go in the dark. Now obviously I've got my lights so I'll be fine and I can set these lower so I can actually point them at the water and see what's going on. But yeah can you see like there's a bunch of guys over there they've kind of got a little camp going on it's just don't feel safe I'm not gonna lie I don't feel safe. I already know what's gonna happen I'm gonna fill up the ski I'm gonna put it in eco mode and head back that way until we find that camp. And it's gonna be dark and I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do this, but that's just the way that the cookies crumbled this time. Okay, let's get some fuel in this thing so we can get moving. Didn't even get a pretty sunset. God, this place sucks. The reason that I'm swapping these is because what I've learned is once you find a spout that's sealed and fits well, don't mess with it because <laughs> it's not easy to do. The other key is then here, not here, because this will pop out. drink this whole time either. All right guys, let's send it. We're not going to the dam. I've decided as I was filling up, there's no point. It's boring. The river's ugly. There's people camping, <laughs> says the guy that wanted to camp along the river, but like people that I probably wouldn't want my sea dew to be left unattended around. I'm just not comfortable at all for my safety. So back that way we go find ourselves camp. All right, Swordsy, you did this. You get yourself out of it. Let's throw some now lights on. There we go. Christmas treed up. Angle these down a bit. going to turn off the nav lights and the uh, running lights because it's affecting my night vision so we'll just go with the yellows there we go How much do you think this is on a 1 to 10? I think uh, 11. And there's an earwig there. Let's see. Oh, uh, not too bad. Please don't bite me. Thanks. Found it. This is going to have to do for tonight because my goodness is it sketchy. Oh, I've got a snotty nose. Yeah, so obviously riding at night was absolutely not my intention. But, you know, I didn't feel safe back there. I feel safer here in the middle of nowhere in the pitch black. So yeah, basically water is there. This is sort of wet. So I'm thinking, if you look here, it sort of gets a bit damp to there. So I think where this fire ring is, this would probably be a good place to pitch the tent somewhere right about here. God knows what's off up there. I just won't think about it. So yeah, all right, let's get the tent unpacked. And let's get in there because these bugs are no bueno.
All right, do your magic. I even got it in neon yellow. We're in, uh, and I apologize. Yes, I'm in my boxes. I just took off my sweaty riding trousers. Okay, so I'm in the tent, finally. That was a sketchy ride, I'm not gonna lie. Like I said, I had no intention of riding at dark or after dark, and uh, yeah, that was definitely not nice. Even with the lights, trying to avoid the shallow areas was, uh, was pretty crazy. So I did manage to make it back down to the original point that I uh, said that I wanted to camp at seems like the biggest uh, most remote although a dirt bike and a truck did go by earlier but i think they're just ripping the trails there is 100 percent a donkey outside of my tent right now there he is hey bud come and have a drink come on come have a drink so let me show you something that i am super excited about if you watched last week's video you'll know that i got a canyon cooler well I bought it with me and now is the moment of truth. Did it stay cold? Is there still ice? Oh buddy, you bet there is. Oh my god, that's so nice. Now, I know it's not 115 degrees like it was on my last trip, but that is still frozen water. So I froze this last night put it in there frozen and there's still ice in there. Can we just take a moment to enjoy this monumental moment together? Cheers. Oh my God, amazing. So yeah, this cooler is absolutely killer. Fits perfectly in the front of the Sea-Doo Longways. So like front to back, and then there's still a little bit of space in the side. So I just put my Crocs in there because yes, I do now have a pair of four wheel drive Crocs. Ha ha! A little non-alcoholic bevy. Like I told you, I've been uh, trying to do no booze for a little bit. I feel great. Uh, you guys know that I absolutely love my beer. So these non-alcoholic ones are hitting the mark for when I want to do something like this and celebrate a adventurous day. I wouldn't call it successful. Well, I guess it's, it's a success because I'm happy and healthy and we've had a good time. I'm a little bit disappointed. I'm not going to lie. I thought this section of river was going to offer way more than it has. Unfortunately, it hasn't. But that doesn't matter because we're still out in nature. There is a wild donkey just kicking it around my uh, tent right now. So things are good. Like I said, the river sucked, but Anytime you get to be out in nature, hanging out, riding a sea-doo is a good day in my book. So cheers, everybody. Thank you for coming along. Okay, let's cook a curry. That sounds like an absolutely splendid way to end the evening. Here, you want to see how cold <laughs> this has stayed? I made some overnight oats for the morning and I froze them and then put them in here thinking that they would thaw. <laughs> what? <laughs> that is just a solid lump of ice and oats um yeah i think i'm gonna have to put that outside look there's like that's crazy that's not glass that's ice look at that wow there we go potatoes chickpeas and a spicy sauce mm -mm. so we're gonna do that with some rice and then we're gonna dip some of these and pretend that they are roti or naan bread Okay, so I want to do my rice separately this time. Yeah, these really are shite. They just burn things to the bottom because they get so hot. So they're honestly more for boiling water than they are for cooking in because it's just so hard to get everything off afterwards. Next up. Oh, they smell good.
Well, there we go, ladies and gentlemen, Bon Apple Teat. So I just had a look to see what this place is called, and it's actually called Mule Wash, which makes sense why all of the mules are here. They are honking and hollering out there, so it's going to be an interesting night's sleep, especially if they come down here and do it. I'm going to poop my pants. That's if the curry doesn't make me poop my pants first. And would it really be an off-grid trip without an iPad full of movies? <laughs> This is how bad I was. I signed up for a Russian class one time thinking it was Spanish. And it took me three classes before I realized, I don't think this is Spanish. Ma'am, the party's outside, okay? Oh, good morning. So that actually wasn't a bad sleep last night. I'm a side sleeper though, so I do find that when I sleep on my cot bed, my arm goes numb, so I have to keep changing from one side to the other. Um, so I don't get like a consistent sleep, but when I am asleep, it's good, and I fall back to sleep pretty quickly, so. In the night, the donkeys were so funny. They would come down, I could hear them drinking, and then I'd move, and then I'd hear run off. Ah, oh, but yeah, so what we've got to do now is, uh, oh, is that a road runner? I think that's a road runner, look. See him. Hey, buddy. Watch out for the coyote. Yeah, so here is proof that the donkeys were here last night, and apparently they're eating good. <laughs> <laughs> that is a, a lot of donkey poo. Yeah, all up here. Hello, bud. Do you want a tortilla? There you go. It's yummy. Is that better if I crouch down? Is that a little bit less scary? Yeah, look. If you don't eat it, those donkeys will. I know that for a fact. So now we just have to consolidate this into this and this. I think it might be time for some overnight oats. Although I need to wash the curry off my spoon. So I've only just got into overnight oats, which is probably a weird thing to say. Um, not really a porridge person. Uh, and if you don't know what overnight oats are, you basically just put uh, steel cut oats with whatever milk you want uh, into one of these mason jars. Add in a few dollops of peanut butter or almond butter as I've got in this one. Uh, some fruit, so I have just like frozen fruit that I throw in like mixed berries. And then a little squirt of agave 
nectar or syrup, whatever you want to call it, for a bit of sweetness. And then you just put it in the fridge and then you eat it the next morning. So super simple. Make them in these little mason jars and they travel really well. I will definitely be bringing these on more camping trips because not only is this delicious, but it's just so easy. And sometimes you don't have time to get set up and get out all the cooking stuff. And it's just nice to be able to grab and go, but have something that's like tasty and good for you and all the rest of it. So if you've never tried overnight oats, you should definitely try it. So a lot of you guys asking in the last video, I posted like a walkthrough of all my camping gear, asking kind of how you actually pack up the ski because I sort of skipped over that part. Well, honestly, it's pretty easy. I mean, I've got my big dry bag there that has all my camping gear in it. So everything but my kitchen is in there. So clothes, sleeping bag, tent, EcoFlow, fan, bed, everything, everything's in there. And then that just gets ratchet strapped onto the back onto the top of the fuel cans. The kitchen, well, I can show you the kitchen, that just goes on easy peasy. So obviously the link system just makes stuff super simple. So that's that now. So that's on there, that's my anchor. So we'll have to dig that up and put that away in a second. And then I just need to ratchet strap this on. So I run one front to back. So I go off this towing hook on the back here and then I come over the front and usually I'll just hook onto the back of this handle, this is nice and strong. And then my second strap goes from that side to this side, goes over the top of the fuel cans and then hooks under here. This is the luggage rack that's holding all of this on. So yeah, very, very simple. So for a shocking amount of gear, it goes on the ski pretty quickly. Packing up is the thing that takes the longest time. Once it's all in the bags, it's literally one, two, three. I've started traveling with this now as well. This has got all my camera gear in it. I actually got this at the uh, Mint 400. So shout out to uh, BF Goodrich and Ojo for that one. That fits there perfectly. And then I've still got some space down the side there as well, which is nice. But yeah, I couldn't be happier with that. That is gonna be a game changer for these trips. Then before I ride, I always make sure to check my bilge pump. So I turn the switch to on and you can hear it. So once I know it's working, then I go to auto and that means that it will only come on if the hole was to fill with water. And uh, that is where it pumps the water out from. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how we pack up the ski. All right, let's just do one last little walk through, make sure we've not forgotten anything. Obviously, if you come out and do stuff like this, leave the place at least as good as you found it, if not better. There was actually no rubbish here, which is amazing. Yeah, everything looks clean, no mess. Perfect. I know I was pretty hard on this river yesterday and you know, I'd driven five hours and then had to go through all the rigmarole of getting fuel and all the rest of it, getting changed. And it was just, it was a long time before I got on the river. And so then when I did get on the river and it wasn't that great, I definitely felt a little bit down. That being said, it is hard to be mad when you wake up to a view like this with nobody else around. So while I wouldn't ride this stretch of river again, it's been pretty boring, honestly at least it's clean at least there's no rubbish i mean obviously as you get up towards town there was people on the side of the banks and everything and rubbish and old like easy ups and stuff up there but down here i've got to say it is very clean and the water is very clean i'm very shallow i'm trying to not be too negative and you know trying to at least say something positive because i feel like what you put out in the world you get back and hopefully if I say nice things about it, then it won't be too shallow <laughs> and we can just have a nice cruise back. Would I come back here and ride the Cedar again? Absolutely not. I would much rather go back to either Havasu uh, or more importantly, go back to that bit underneath the Hoover Dam. We will revisit that place, guys. I might actually do a group ride out there because that was really special. If you haven't seen that episode, go check it out. Uh, I will link it below, but oh, it was unbelievable. In fact, I'm gonna put in a clip from that now, just so that you can compare. So, so look at what you can see here, and then check out this clip. Can we just take a second though, because this view that I'm about to show you is possibly in the top five most beautiful views I think I've ever seen in my life. Uh, are you kidding? 
I am in awe. I had no idea that the river was going to be this beautiful. So you see what I mean. I'm not being too harsh on this. It's just I have been to some absolutely amazing places. Anyway, enough waffling. Let's get back on the river and head back towards the truck. Goodbye, camping spot. Bye, Roadrunner. <sighs> All right, then. Let's do this. Day. So on the ride back I've been thinking and I hate to be negative. I, I very rarely am a negative person. I try to design my life to be positive and to have positive experiences and be surrounded by positive people. That being said, sometimes there's just nothing you can do about it. This was one of those examples. However, I would be doing this river an injustice if I didn't stop in a place like this and say that there are in fact beautiful parts of this river. I think the problem that I made is I just went too far north. I think if you do come here and you stay in this area, which uh, maybe I'll pull up a Google map and I'll sort of show you where I am at the moment, then you're sort of in a much better place just to enjoy the river. Now, it's not as fun to do like a big long trip like I like to do, where I like to ride, you know, 30, 40, 50, 100 miles, whatever it is, but if you just want to come out, bring the boat, beach it somewhere like this, enjoy a couple of beers and just hang out, definitely worth doing. I just wanted to be fair to the river, fair to nature, and point out the fact that it's not all ugly and people on the banks making fires and leaving a mess. Some of it is gorgeous. So I am very much enjoying this ride back to the truck. Sorry for being a grumpy ass yesterday, but I was just scared and afraid and alone. Luckily not naked though. Luckily for you, I actually quite like being naked in nature. Stay. So if you don't want to be quite as remote as I was last night, then they do have campsites like this, which honestly would have been quite nice. And the reason why I wanted to stop here is because at the top of this hill, I spotted a mound of rocks with some flags. I want to go check them out. United States Army, 1775. Watch me get stung by a scorpion. What does this say? Lonesome, man's best friend. I don't know what this is, but there is a book you can sign. You are the best dog I ever didn't know. Wait, what? This for a dog? Oh, come on. Oh, is this a shrine for a dog? Oh, this paper's so brittle. Yeah, look, it's for a dog of some description. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, fellow. Something we know there is good. God in heaven, bless your soul. 2010, look. Wow, 2003, oh my goodness. Okay, I'm gonna have to look and see what this is about, but I am gonna leave a little note because I feel like that's what you have to do. I think it's for this dog called Lonesome. Look, it says right here, 1983, man's best friend, hollow please. Please don't destroy this grave. Yeah, look, it is, and this is a little, little water bowl. Buddy. There you go. We don't deserve dogs, Adam. That's really sweet. I bet that was a good dog. Well, they're all good dogs, aren't they? Oh, I missed Diesel. Okay, we're gonna get back to Diesel.
Well, there you go, guys. That is going to wrap up this episode. I hope you've enjoyed this one. I'm sorry it wasn't quite as beautiful as the last one, but I do feel like maybe I gave the river a little bit of a hard time. I would say if you do want to come here, if you want to go to Martinez Lake or Squaw Lake, which is this one here, which is literally right next door, then uh, just stay sort of south of, uh, I believe it was called like Area 4 or Camp 4 or something. I'll put it on the screen. I forget what it's called. But yeah, just stay south of there and the river is actually quite nice. Lots of places where you can go beach the boat, have a nice time enjoy yourself and yeah just come for the day or use some of those campsites lower down overnight but anyway i've had a lot of fun yesterday was definitely stressful but waking up this morning by the side of the river was absolutely beautiful and then that cruise back was really nice too so it's hard to have a bad day riding a sea dude that's all i can say so guys thank you so much for watching if you have enjoyed it give it a big thumbs up share this video like comment do all the things follow me on instagram if you want uh let me know if you want some merch like i said i'm really interested and doing some merch a lot of you also asking about the lighting kits they're coming i promise i'm just stretched so thin right now that it's so hard to get everything done that i want to but i promise you they're coming as well as some other goodies which it's right here but i can't show you the eagle-eyed ones of you may have already noticed but yeah there's a lot of cool stuff coming anyway thank you guys so much i gotta drive five hours home and go pick up my dog but most importantly remember until next time don't do anything i wouldn't do see ya